Manon is this young girl. She's on her way to the convent. And before she goes there, she meets her brother, Lesko. And that's where she obviously meets uh, De Grieux. De Grieux is a young man who's gone to the city because he wants to become a priest. So he's going to study. And there's a slight change of plan as soon as he gets to the city. He sees Manon and falls in love with her and changes completely the path of his life. She is this incredible, beautiful woman that every man falls for. And uh, she uses uh, this asset to really survive in life. She's pretty and she's flirty and she's beautiful, but I think it's the intensity and the truthfulness of her persona, of her being, that makes uh, the girl fall in love with her. When they're dancing, even in a pas de deux, it's not a dance. It's a means to, to an end, to tell the story. The brother of Manon, Lesko, is manipulative. He's a charlatan, he's very naughty. He's controlling every character and deciding who he wants to meet, because he, he's sort of trying to sell people and, and, you know, have a cut on the money. We have an expression, don't we, that some people will sell their own grandmother. And I think that sums him up, actually, but he does it in a very charming fashion. Manon is said at a time where women had no choice and no rights, so therefore the male characters are very much in control. Monsieur GM is not the main character but he's very important with Manon's journey. He's extremely wealthy and gets everything he wants, usually. Monsieur GM's first introduced to Manon by Lesko. There's a freshness about her which, as Monsieur GM, I sort of, I like, and it catches my eye. So I do business with Lesko. Of course, Manon, it's your sister, and you know her so well, and you have a very strong bond. Therefore, that gives you the advantage that you can push her in whatever direction you decide to do. The character of Manon is quite complex. There is that tussle between realising real love and also realising you would actually like money. Deep down inside, you know, she's actually a very fragile person and you know she gets caught in circumstances that you know leads her to tragedy when she sees what GM wants to offer her she just you know go, goes for that and you see it actually very clearly in, in the Pas de Trois how Lesko manipulates her she goes from being very confident and sensual to actually being the little sister that is unsure of what's going on that scene is actually very, very important. Moments before you see her in the bedroom with the Grier and how happy she is discovering another side of her. But then Lesko arrives with his plan and it's not a good plan. <laughs> it's very interesting actually for every character how that part of trust sets them in their life at that point and what journeys they will take after that. He was such a genius, Kenneth. It's incredible how he choreographed every step, makes total sense. There's a lot of slow movement, but um, there's a lot of meaning in it. Sick. Well, on has become a 20th century classic. It draws its strength on the human emotions. These Macmillan's ballets are more real. There are so many moments where you're just a man or woman, a person, stand on two feet, look the other person in the eye and, and feel. You're watching real art in motion. It's just not choreography put to music or music over choreography. It's just completely married and it's very, very emotional to watch as well as to perform. We all go through problems and happiness and passion and love and disappointments and in each of his ballets he exposed that so well. That's just the most incredible thing to just being able to be on the stage and open yourself without being afraid.